Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to talk about a new JavaScript feature called Numeric Separator. It's already in your browser. A lot of people don't know about it. It's a cool, weird little feature. But I think it's important to know what's going on in JavaScript world if you are a good JavaScript programmer because for several reasons. Uh, first of all, it's fun. Fun to learn new things. Secondly, you can impress people with your skill and it will make your code improved and readable. And lastly, just in case, if you get this question in your interview or if you get any question, you can use some of those features to impress uh, the interviewee so that, uh, you know, you can, you can get a job. So let's talk about it and welcome to Texas Tutorials. Okay, so let's talk about this cool feature called numeric separator. So how does it work? So for that, let's take an, a simple example. Let's say if you wanna have, if it's a financial application that you're building and you have a very large number like um, 250 million, okay? So I'm gonna define a variable. Uh, for lack of a better word, I'm just gonna say lot of money because 250 million is a lot of money. <laughs> And uh, it's 25 and by seven zeros followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, how do I know this? Because I, when I was uh, writing for this video, and I look at it, but otherwise it's hard to remember, you know, how many zeros goes after 25, right? It's hard to read. Okay, if one number here and there, it would have a completely different meaning. At one zero, it becomes over two billion one less zero it becomes 25 million. So you can make a mistake and you can screw up the whole system. So it would be nice to have something like this. So if 25, zero, then zero, 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 then zero, zero, zero. Like in real life, you would have a separator uh, where you use comma to separate every thousands, right? So how can I do that here? So JavaScript introduced this new feature called numeric separator where you can do the same thing. But instead of comma, you would use underscore because comma has a different meaning in JavaScript. So let's use it. Uh, how do you know it works? Well, it didn't break anything. Uh, so let's say console log and a lot of money. And let's run this. All right, so it prints the right number. So it works. So this is pretty cool. Because anytime you go over 10,000, it becomes hard to read. And this separator definitely helps. It makes your code readable and uh, it's less prone to mistake. However, when you print it in a console log, it always gives you the regular numeric syntax. It doesn't give you the separator, which is important to notice. Okay, what if you have a floating point? So if you have something like, you know, one, two, three here, also, you can use numeric separator by doing this. So you can read uh, everything after the dot clearly. So if I clear this and run this, this would work as well. Okay, uh, but this is, we are talking about dollars, but in other countries, they may not have separator like this because if you look at India, they have something called lakh, which is 100,000. Uh, in America, you would write something like this, right? But in India, they would write something like this. So you wanna put a separator uh, this way, right? So if you try this, it also works. You don't have to separate by three digits always. You can separate by one or more, okay? So it has a lot of flexibility. So if I console log that lag, it would work. I can actually do this if I want to and separate every single number, but then it doesn't make sense. There are some things that doesn't work. Like if you put a separator in the front or at the back uh, without having a number followed by it. So if I run this, it would give me an error. Or if I put something like this in the back, 
Okay, so this we talked about, you know, integers and floating points. What about uh, something else? Let's say if you have a binary, I'm just going to call B. And in JavaScript, you write binary like this, just in case if you don't know. So I'm just going to write uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, I have this large number and because I separate by zeros and one, it's easy to read. But if you have like a mix of zeros and one, it's very hard to read. But here I can use numeric separator. Now I'm separating by eight. Uh, so basically uh, it's an octate separator. So let's uh, use that. And it gives you 255. I can also do nibble by putting every four. Okay. so this is also very much readable now let's talk about the bigger biggest integer uh, what if you have let's say something called big number okay or i i don't like to get big because this is giant giant equal to let's say if you don't know in javascript uh, if you exceed something more than 16 digits it will create problems so let's try to do that. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And let me add maybe something else also. Make it a little bit bigger. Uh, as you can see, what's printing and what's there, it's, it's not matching, right? Because it has two, three at the end. Because anytime if you go over 16 digits, it you will get unpredictable results. So in this case, you wanna use something called big int and the way to do it and i have actually a video um that i previously released on features on es 2020 where i have explained i'll provide a link here if i put n at the end then it would be considered as a big int okay and it would say object because it becomes an object so in order to print it i would have to inspect it and if i inspect it it would give me something like this so if you have a big int, then it would always gives you uh, the, when you console log it, it would give you in a form of big int, okay? And here also, you can uh, do something like this, where you can have a numeric separator, so they can read much better, and I can do something. Okay, now it's much readable. Okay, so what about browser compatibility? Now that we know the, the feature, where can we use it? So as of now, all the latest browsers, uh, Chrome, Safari, Firefox, uh, I haven't actually tested on, uh, what is that browser from, from Microsoft? <laughs> I always forget the name of it, but anyway, I believe it works there, but I haven't, don't, don't take my word for it, uh, but regardless, if you are using like a React or Angular project where you have transpiler like Babel or TypeScript, uh, this feature would work anyway, right? Because you wanna make sure when you use it, it's backward compatible for older browsers. So you, as a, as a safe, always safe side, you always wanna use Babel or TypeScript. So that's it folks. I hope you learned something new from this video. And if you did, please like, subscribe, and uh, provide a nice comment. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, follow the groups uh, on the Facebook where I post a lot of interesting articles. And if you have any questions, you can post them out as well. And you can purchase my Udemy course on JavaScript and React and also translate this video for me if you have some time. The information is in the description. And thank you.